We talked about partial sums of a sequence, right? So now I want to introduce some notation, talk about what insights we can gain from thinking about this, and particularly when we enter the AP and GP world. Because they are so uh, structured, right, we can, we can yield, they yield insights when we have all when we dig in, okay? So first bit with notation. Um, this, this is kind of like the, the the cousin, if you like, of sigma notation. In that, it's talking about exactly the same thing. It's a sum, right? It's a partial sum. And what the way I read this is the sum of the first n terms. So this is a little bit like saying the sum from k equals 1 up to m. Okay? They're kind of equivalent in my head. The sum of the first n terms. Okay? For that reason, I can actually just write this out as a pattern, right? Like think back to our definitions for how, uh, how we describe um, a sequence or series. So if it's the first n terms, what's the first term? We just call it t1, right? And then you add the next term, and then the next term, and you keep going, right? I'm going to write a little bit on the end here. You'll write the third last term, and the second last term. Sorry, that's a one. And then you'll write the last term, the nth term. That's S n, the partial sum up to uh, n, right? So when you have a look at this, no big deal. Like that's just a simple idea. But we can take this and we can we can yield some insights out of it. Okay. So this is the description based on a pattern, right? Um, we already know that you can describe it as a formula. There's one other kind of way to describe a sequence or series, right? What was the other way? Pattern. Formula, or a recursive definition, right? So what would be the recursive definition of the partial sum of this sequence? Hmm. Well, if I wanted to say, what? how do I get to the nth partial sum of a sequence? Now, the whole idea of recursion is that it's like, well, if you can work out one, then just give me the next one, right? Work out one, then just give me the next one. Work out one, give me the next one. Okay. So the last little term of this nth partial sum, right, is going to be Tn. Do you agree with that? I'm just going to write it over here. I'm going to leave a spot. Now, what is left? What is left? Well, the answer is all of that is left, right? That's everything else that isn't that last term, OK? But I already have language to describe this. I've written it on the board, right? What is this? And the answer is it's the partial sum, not up to n, but up to n minus 1, OK? Now, you might think, well, what was the point of that? That's a bit of a trivial kind of thing, right? Well, when we looked at sequences from the beginning, we saw the recursive definition seems a bit unusual, but actually we can use it for testing, right? You remember, is this an AP? Is it a GP? You can test using the recursive definition. Now, I'm actually not quite done yet. Has anyone noticed I'm missing something from my recursive definition? This is how to go from one step to the next. That'll give you that. But there's one thing missing. What, is a what else does a recursive definition need? Yeah. First sum. Good. I need to know where to start, right? For instance, here is a, um, let's go back to APs. Let's go back to APs. I can say here is a recursive definition for an AP, right? But what AP is it? What, what might be an example that it could be? What numbers are these? These could be the even numbers, right? Could be the even numbers. But it could be the odd numbers too. Or it could be like, you know, uh, I could start at like a million and go a million too, which is, you know, no particularly important set. So not just how to get from one term to the next, I need the first term. I need to define it. So that's the first partial sum, right? Now, <laughs> ironically, I have also written the first partial sum on the board, right there, just kind of hiding. Right? Here's here, all of this is the partial sum up to n. Here in green is the partial sum up to n minus 1. Where is the partial sum up to what? Oh, oh t of n minus t of n. Okay, no, never mind. Yes, the isn't, isn't that the sum of the first one terms? Yes. It's just the first term, right? So s1 is by definition t1. That's all I need. Now I have a recursive definition. Okay? Now, like I said, this doesn't seem all that useful, but let me show you how useful it is. Okay? What can we use this recursive definition for? Let's give an example. Okay. Um, we'll describe this example in a second, but I don't want to spoil it. See from this line, 
here, this line here. I can generate a test out of this, right? That's how we looked at it with APs. But I can also turn it around and say, if I know what the partial sum is, if I have a formula for the partial sum, do you see, again, written on the board, there is also a formula for any individual term I want. Do you see it hiding there? Just need to rearrange it ever so slightly. There is the nth term, right? Any term I want, just put in a value of m. So to get that guy by himself, what am I going to do to both sides? Minus s and minus. I just subtract this guy, right? So it's this. Do you see why that makes sense, right? Uh, I guess you could think about it like this. If this is s of n, right, then s of n minus 1 is the whole green part. So if I take away the green part, all you get left with is the nth term, okay? So for instance, suppose I have a partial sum and I know that its formula, right, if you add up the first n terms, you'll get n squared, right? That sounds like an interesting sequence. I wonder what it is. Well, I can use this, this recursive definition just twisted a little bit. I can use it to work out what this is. And this is actually a very famous result, as you'll see shortly. Let's give it a go. If this is how I define Sn, then Tn is the partial sum up to n, subtract the partial sum up to n minus 1. So that looks like this. Do you agree with that? There's my partial sum up to n there, and my partial sum up to n minus 1. Now this is really simple. There's some simple algebra here I can do. Let's expand it. Okay. What's going to happen with this negative? The n squareds are going to cancel. cancel, right? There's a double negative in front of the 2n, and then there will be a minus 1, right? This is the nth term. Hold on a second. What sequence of numbers is this? What, what is the first term? n equals 1 will give me 2 minus 1. It'll give me 1. What's n equals 2? It's... 3, and then 5, and then 7. I have the odd numbers here, right? I have this sequence. Oops, 1. There you go. Total save, okay? Now, <laughs> just think about this. Did you ever notice this before? Did you ever notice that the first, the partial sum here, the first of the first 1 terms is 1, which is 1 squared. The partial sum of the first 2 terms is 1 plus 3, which is 4, which is 2 squared. The partial sum here is 9, and then the partial sum is 16 and 25. Now, hold on a second. You shouldn't be surprised, right? You shouldn't be surprised. Because... Oh, odd numbers are awesome, right? Watch this. Um, I should know there should be a nice, simple way to demonstrate this, if it comes out to such a neat thing, because I've said before, right, why is a GP called a GP? Because there's geometry hiding in there, which is why our language is like squared and cubed and so on, okay? How could I arrange these pieces such that when I get n of these together, for example, the first five, I should be able to construct them, compose them into a square of side length five? It's not that hard. Think with me. There's only really one way I can um, represent one geometrically. I'll just put an X there. There's a one, right? There's one dot. How will I add three dots to this thing to make a square of side length two? There's not that many ways to draw a, side of, a square of side length two. If I put one, two, three, there's my square of side length two, right? Where am I going to, uh, two points, right? Where am I going to put my five? I'm going to go a little bit further. There's my square of side length three. And here's my square of side length four. And sure enough, if you add nine to this guy, it looks to me, if I can count anything worth my salt, I've got five squared. Now you see why this is a famous result. It's so simple, but it's like so pretty. So, so what's the point? Having the formula for the nth partial sum, s of n, okay, you can use it to get out interesting results like this. 